Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Joel Kellogg, and we're here in Cedar Park, Texas, at the ETS Lingering facility. I'm here with Sergio Longoria, the technical manager for our RF or radio frequency filters, um, and he's going to take us on a little tour of our filter line and the expansion that we've been going through. Okay. Sergio? All right. Thank you, Joe. All right. So we're here at uh, the filter manufacturing plant in Cedar Park, Texas. And I'm going to take you through uh, some of the, uh, the things we do here and what the expansions have been. So what we are right now here in the uh, receiving and stocking area for the filter department. As you can see, we have, we have uh, cases, metallic cases where we put the filters in. We have materials like bus bars, uh, capacitors that uh, uh, we put into the uh, filters bypass capacitors if you turn around some more over there we have more cases things now some of the smaller components go uh, in this stocking like a carousel type machine and we have lots of uh, materials there capacitors resistors labels all kinds of other things um, so we have uh, from small cases like uh, we can see over here, um, here you can see uh, small cases like these, all right, uh, where some signal filters go or, or small amperage filters to much larger cases like this. Here, uh, we can open something, some of these and uh, we also have much larger ones there have we have some more over here uh, these are filter uh, element cases uh, and we have some large ones over there those are also element cases but they're for a much larger amperage type uh, filters so everything comes in here and but this is not enough room to put all the stock that is needed for filters and especially uh, now that we have uh, experienced a, a basically a fourfold, a fourfold increase in uh, demand of, of filters, we have had to expand the place uh, where we have uh, stock. And so we created uh, that mezzanine that's on top of the filter area here. And uh, at first it was a smaller mezzanine and, and now we have expanded it even further that way. And we can, uh, we can take a look at where some of the uh, cans are stored later on when we go to the other side. The floor space of the filter area, uh, it was only about right, right here, uh, maybe about 2,500 uh, square feet of room, but it has, uh, since, the, uh, since the demand has increased so much that we had to uh, double the space uh, in fact and so we now have expanded further further out now as we uh, come some of the materials come in here and you can see for example here we have inductors Uh, cables that we use uh, mag magnet wire and uh, uh, do we want to go inside uh, there to take sure. a look yeah it's, so, so we're actually making a large majority of the components ourselves correct so we we do make most of the inductors here but the demand has become so great that we do have some strategic partnerships and some uh, vendors that are helping us uh, supply coils uh, for the various types of filters that we make so let's take a quick look at how we do this. So um, the, the cores come from the vendors, we put them together and then we uh, coat them and uh, by a process, a special a process here that coats the, the cores in order for them uh, to uh, be wound with cables. So first we need to kind of uh, warm them up you know, get them to the t right temperature so that they can be uh, coated. And then we let them uh, cool off over there. 
and then they get wild. I'm sorry, we're just warming them up and bringing them up to temperature here? Yes. Uh, oh, what, is, what, what, what does it do? Uh, it, it, it gets the right temperature so that the epoxy, the, the um, uh, coating material, can adhere to the, to the, uh, to the core. So once it's done, then we don't need them hot anymore, and so we let them cool. Then uh, we can wind the, uh, the, the cores. So this is more or less what, what happens to them. We, we, uh, we have specified the number of wires that we need to put in there, the number of turns, and then it goes around the, uh, the core. There are many different types of cores, many sizes, many different designs, uh, some of them as low as uh, for half an amp, for example, as large as uh, 800 amps. Uh, and so we go here. Some of this is very uh, labor intensive. And so because it is labor intensive, we have had to increase the number of people also that work in this oh and and even with that is is not enough we have vendors that are helping us uh, get some uh, inductors in so we do have some stacking uh, or stocking uh, areas as we go, as, as they prep and get ready to be used inside the filter elements, as we see here in just a moment. So they're just staging for the next step in the process then? That's correct. Okay. So we stage them and then here, for example, see it's um, on this section here, we have we have essentially like uh, three different um, uh, the inductors, putting them all together, prepping some of the materials, and then from there it goes into uh, the actual cases, like right here. So. For example, this is done, and and we have another another group doing the same same thing. So as we go like with this, then from here they go to to be tested. But as I said, this is, uh, there's three different ones. So this is like a semi-assembly uh, line. And then we have a, an individual cell, typically for filters that are like a one-off or a two-off. Uh, so we have individual cells that we can take a look in a minute. And uh, they will be looking at making uh, just the, uh, the, the small orders. Uh, uh, but here, what we do is, is, is get out, uh, I don't know, 20 filters a, a day from, from these. Then from here goes, oh, and the last, uh, I said there were three. The last one is a, an actual assembly line that we're going to be looking at that actually has conveyors and all that that we're going to take a look in just a moment. So it, it goes after we assemble, assemble a filter and we put the the parts inside uh, then from there it comes to this area here where we do all of our basic uh, tests so we check uh, um, the the check uh, according to the schematics uh, according to the schematics uh, the, the the technician has all the uh, uh, information he needs to do the test for capacitance inductance uh, he checks the insulation resistance. Uh, he checks the DC resistance. Uh, there is also a check 
Once that's good, then the filters go back to the line and they get potted, they get closed, and then they come back here for a final insertion loss test and, and a, high, a final high voltage test. So those um, tests, it sounds like you're kind of doing two types of tests, one for safety and then one for performance, is, is that correct? That, that's correct. So the first one, uh, the, the first in process makes sure that all the components that are supposed to be there are there and that they're measuring within the specifications. But there's also a, a high voltage test that's mandated by UL. And whether the filter is listed or not, we do the same test on all the filters. Uh, we found that that's, uh, that that's better, that's best practice. And so we, we do that. Now, because of the expansion that we have experienced, uh, the fourfold incle increase in, in filters, we have had to create other tests. Uh, another set of analyzers to, to do that, so, okay. Uh, any questions, uh, anything? Nope. All right, well, let's take a look in, in here just briefly. So th this is where we uh, assemble, these are like uh, assembly cells, let's just say, um, where they would be building and assembling those filters that we get orders for like maybe one or maybe two four uh, there's not that many but we get orders where we need to make 20 cabinets for example and each cabinet has four elements in it so that's 80 elements that we need to make fast and so we can switch our uh, the uh, assembly line the flow line to to uh, to make any type of uh, element 100 250 okay. 400 600 and 800 and even the high capacity one so if we had a high volume order on any any type of filter yeah. they could get moved over to the high flow line okay. correct and doing uh, feed through capacitors over here um, I guess the person is out today but anyway there was one person uh, doing this and uh, now we have one two three four people doing the capacitor pre-assemblies and from here they're taken to the uh, to the power filters that we need over here on this uh, on the on the semi assembly line over here um so we yeah. talked about like you know we've got filters where we, you know, we get orders for one or two or then we have filters where it's called maybe like a medium volume or right. you know, maybe it's order of five or ten yeah and then order where we get a high uh a large number so how many different types of filters does ets lingren actually make wow there's uh that's a hard hard question we have in the system over 600 different types of filters that we can make. Uh, and of course, the more popular ones are uh, uh, power line filters, uh, 100 amps, uh, 250, <clears throat> 400 amp filters. And now, uh, recently, there has been a, uh, an increased demand for EMP and hemp uh, filters. And so we're seeing a great increase on the demand for 100 amps, 250, 400, 600, and 800 amp uh, EMP filters. And uh, those are being also handled by the uh, um, assembly line, the uh, flow. Now, um, in, in there we make, uh, we wind uh, the capacitors and what has happened there is that we have increased the, the number of people doing that, uh, but doubled it. And so we have a, a, a what is it called? A double, uh, a second shift, sorry. A second shift that takes care of that. And so they, they feed those uh, capacitors to, to the lines to where they're needed.
the assembly line. So uh, let's uh, go over on this side here. Yeah. How many, so with all those different filters, what are all the applications? You talked about power lines, you yeah. talked about hemp. What yeah. other applications do you use for? Well, there's, uh, there's uh, of course, the, the power line, like you were mentioning, uh, small power circuit. 20 amps, 30 amps, uh, 100 amps, but we also make uh, smaller filters that are used on, on for signal and control. mechanical automated something and you need to have information sent back or you need to send in commands into the into the unit that you're testing then uh, you use filters uh, signal filters and control filters and even data filters to pass those things Resistors, uh, prepping connections, um, and these uh, cells here do our what we would call like our stock filters, uh, filters that are in great demand, and and you would call that uh, what like the the, the high uh, uh, the high demand filters. I mean, okay. and. Uh, a lot of them being used on MRI rooms and uh, for smoke detectors, for example, and and so this is the area where. Where those are built, but and I'm not sure. OK, and. Uh, but the demand is so great that we also have strategic uh, partnerships with uh, other vendors that can help us uh, in, uh, in, in supply that demand. Mm -hmm. So if we come this way, you can see we have uh, two, two stations in addition, with, in addition to those uh, other three and four stations over there that supply and uh, put the, all the materials in there and then they get flown, uh, they get put back into the, into the, um, they go by the uh, test cage. So this is what I was saying. So we have a test cage over there for that section, for the filters that are in the cells or the filters that are in the semi um, assembly line. And then we have the test cages for the assembly lines here. Common applications uh, would be like power for EMC chambers uh, to filter the power into an EMC chamber uh, to filter the power into a into a protected space. Uh, as a, uh, they're also called skiffs. Skiffs, yeah. Yeah, okay. and so. For filters for that uh, we make uh, medical filters we make filters for mri rooms and operating uh hundred amps to be precise 
and then they come um, so as you can see we have uh, quite a few uh, on the line here and they're going to go into the test area where we do the same test as we mentioned uh, before capacitance inductance uh, insulation resistance all those things they get tested for Um, did I finish uh, mentioning uh, the applications? So MRI rooms, uh, EMP, uh, SCIFs, um, anything else you can think filter? of? What are you filtering? Okay, so we need filters so that when you have one of these chambers that you want to isolate radio frequencies that are in the environment, you don't want them inside your, your chamber. And so the power filters... Uh, also, these uh, filters, uh, most of these filters are what uh, they are considered uh, Tempest and Tempest. Escaping from the chamber also and uh, so that they don't get picked up by uh, um, nefarious elements out there. So we have uh, the test uh, area here. Again, here we do the, um, uh, some of the basic tests, uh, including the high voltage test that is uh, required by UL. And uh, we have more uh, some uh, nicer, uh, newer equipment that we have now. We have, uh, in fact, we even have re That's correct. And here the gentleman is doing the insertion loss, the final insertion loss test for this unit here uh, to make sure that after everything that happened, it still performs the way we advertise it does. And so. And when you say final insertion loss, is that. We, we couldn't possibly do insertion loss test on every single one of them. So what we do is uh, we have a sampling plan. And so some of them get tested over there and then some of them in, on in process and some of them get tested on final. Um, now sometimes, uh, what, that, that's one of the good things about ETS Lingen. We can customize pretty much anything a, a customer would want. So from the design of a newer filter or new filter, to the way they want it tested. So this is our normal production test, but it is possible if the customer requires a different test or if they require us to test every single filter, we can do that, we can accommodate that if that's what's needed. You know? what, do you, what are the implications of all doing all that additional uh, well, <laughs> The implication is that it's going to cost more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, you have any uh, questions on? Uh, yeah, so um, just know there's a um, what's this extra extension off the, off of here? Is that? Oh, okay. So what this is doing here is simulating that that this is inside the uh, the uh, enclosure, the cabinet, because okay. this is only a filter element, and the terminals, the I don't know if you can tell from the terminals, the bus bars, for example, are exposed. Okay. And so what we need to do is, is simulate or isolate the, the input from the output so that we can do a, a good insertion loss test. Okay, so it measures like the attenuation of the filter. Yeah, so it's like a shielded cap on there. Exactly, yeah, yeah okay. exactly. That's what it, this does. Um, so 
So here we just do the final things, putting the gaskets together. Uh, potting, gaskets. And I'm sorry, and what, what's, when you say potting, what's potting? The potting is an epoxy material that is poured inside, which uh, has basically three functions. Uh, one is, is a dielectric, which uh, helps in the, in the prevention of any arcs and shorts. Uh, and secondly, it can uh, diffuse or transmit. Uh, it is a thermally, thermal, thermally conductive, or how would you say that? Yeah, it, it transfers hip. Uh, there you go. That's a good one. It, it helps to dissipate the heat uh, generated by the inductors. And, uh, and thirdly, it, it helps to uh, secure some of the components uh, inside. And so... So that, that'll help kind of ensure they don't get damaged in transit or something that, like that? That's right. That they, they stay in place. I mean, everything is pretty much secure, but the epoxy gives it an additional um, uh, yeah, so notice level of, of security there. Uh -huh. So there's a question where some of the filters you see red edge. What's what's the what is a red edge filter? The red edge filters are the ones that have been tested at uh, Little Mountain for uh, mill standard 188, 125 and they have uh, been proven to meet the requirements for that standard uh, they meets the residuals for e1 and for e2 which are some uh, some norms that the standard uh, uh, tells us that we need to test uh, the filters to make sure that they can survive that the equipment attached to the filters can survive uh, uh, a hemp fault uh, uh, high altitude electromagnetic pulse. So we have a question here. So they're asking, so that's a military standard you just referenced. Right. Are these filters strictly used for military applications? Uh, no. No, in fact, uh, many of these uh, filters uh, are being used in other uh, industries. Okay. Uh, uh, like, for example, um, the, uh, the power industry and also data centers and other places. Now, there are commercial EMP standards also uh, but um, mill standard 18125 is usually the one that everyone okay, mo most calls people reference? yeah okay. most people reference that okay. yeah okay. so here's the final test that is done here once everything is closed up so again as you can see here we have a line of uh, 800 amp filters coming out and here we have a line of 600 amp filters coming here. So once they get to, to here they'll be uh, done the final test, the final insertion loss test, and then they get put into this uh, cabinet here. So uh, we have lots of cabinets and you can see some of them are um, lined up over here. Uh, uh, I mentioned the mezzanine that we had. That's an expansion we had to do in order to accommodate all the extra cases and cabinets that we need. And you can see up there on the second floor, all of that is uh, filter stock. Here then, as, as we move them down, I don't know if you can tell, I'm come back here okay let's take a look sounds good so, so, mm -hmm. these, look like, so these are actually individual elements then they're not like they don't get packaged with a larger correct uh, so a larger container then yeah so these are filter elements only so for example this would filter uh, one face uh, or or a neutral in a, in a power system so here so you can see here, these are getting uh, masked to be painted. Well, this is interesting too. So these are, we got like a little vent here. Um, is that, is, so that, that, that'll meet the RF requirements then for the box as well? And I'm assuming it helps dissipate the
eventually this will have gasket around here and we can take a look at that over there and uh, are they uh, didn't we just tell them to leave it uh, well anyway uh, okay so this is uh, this is the clean side and then this is what we call the, the dirty side in other words usually the filters are attached on the outside of the chamber and the power comes penetration of some sort right. some kind of connection that sure. makes an RF seal between the the uh, clean side of the filter and the actual chamber so that the, the power cables can pass through into there so this area will be the clean side so it is okay to have this uh, grid here on the on the um, dirty side so we move here and this is where we do the uh, the painting. I don't know if there's anything here. Let's see. And no filters being painted right now. So, but if you want to take a look, hey. All right. All right. So now we can take a look at uh, what we do. So once they're painted, they're brought over here to the final staging area. Do we have one to lid off? Oh, good. Excellent. So uh, maybe you can, uh, we're going to look at a cabinet. So as we mentioned, these are filter elements, which then are going to go inside this cabinet. Thank you. Okay. So... And here we have an example. So this is set up for three-phase power then? Yeah, so this is a three-phase power and then a, and then a neutral. Yep. Okay. Because if you have a system that has three-phase and neutral, you want to filter the neutral it also because okay. it goes inside. Right. So this is this is an 800, uh, three -phase, 800 amp three-phase uh, three plus neutral uh, filter. So now these, these elements are, I mean, they're, they're packaged elements themselves, meaning they're not like some of the exposed components like we saw in some of the other filters. So if no. for some reason one were to get damaged or something like that, you could conceivably replace just that one element? Yes, absolutely. And, and so instead of taking down the entire uh, filter yeah. element uh, uh, or the, the entire filter cabinet, then you only take out what, uh, what was damaged. Uh, right. you know that's one of the things that I would like to maybe mention here you will notice that in this particular case in this particular filter these uh, MOVs are on the are on the clean side of the of the filter sometimes they're on the dirty side the difference being that when the filter is located when an EMP filter is located on the outside of a of a chamber that you're protecting, the the uh, uh, protective elements are on this side of the filter, and the and the uh, arrestor is on the on the line side. But if the filter is located on the inside of the protected chamber, then the power is the coming the, the power from the outside is going to hit the clean side first. And so that's where you need the protective elements. So these filters have the protective uh, elements on this side, plus the arrestors on this side. So it's important on an EMP project to know where the filters are going to be located uh, as it uh, matters uh, from the shielding standpoint. So is it going to be on the outside or is it going to be on the inside of the protected area? very important because this cannot be changed in the field oh yeah you know? yeah. yeah so yeah so where you could get, you could change out a component you can't really so it is because it's not just a matter of moving the MOVs to the other side uh, uh, that won't work so you'll have to replace uh, all the elements and and that so if that happens 
So, so these are quite large. I mean, these these um, they can't be trivial to, to move around. Um, no. and they have to weigh quite a bit, right? So yeah. So one of these uh, weighs around 300 pounds uh, okay. each one. So you will need uh, um, some some help right. in, in in getting one of these out. So if you've got four of those in the cabinet, I mean, this is probably about 1,500 pounds. That's correct. Yeah, something like that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. We typically recommend the the legs, although they can be mounted directly on the floor. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is sometimes needed because they're coming from the bottom. Their 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 cabling is coming on the bottom. All right. So because of our Increased demand of filters. We all of these that you can see here on this side It's it's new It's an expansion. So this is the part of the expansion that has doubled the the area that we needed and uh, from here They go into the shipping area and we are uh, in a position to expand further if needed into this area if the demand uh, And uh...